Hello! Uh, thank you for the countdown uh, in the chat. Uh, it helped me to uh, time uh, the going live moment. Uh, so yeah, thank you and hello everyone. Uh, nice to see you here. Uh, can you hear me by the way? It's my uh, second live stream ever and the first uh, public live stream on Device Orchestra. So I'm not 100% sure that everything works. Okay, I get some yeses uh, in the chat. Great! So you can hear me. So we can continue. Uh, in this live stream I'm going to try to play an electric kettle. Uh, but as a side quest, uh, I'll ha I have a 3D printing uh, project for this uh, live stream. And before we begin with the electric kettles, I'll just start the 3D printing because it takes almost two hours to print uh, so that uh, to make it before uh, the live stream ends uh, I'll start the 3D printing now and for the printer we have uh, its its own camera and uh, we can uh, check every now and then how the printing is going, if everything's okay. Uh, just uh, one moment and I'll press the start button and then it should start printing. And yeah, what I'm printing here, uh, I print two objects for uh, the next video. Uh, the next video will be the Avengers Avengers theme and I'll print uh, the Captain America uh, shield and Thor's hammer. Uh, I've prepared the uh, 3D models and uh, it's now ready to print and it should uh, start printing any time soon. Yeah, but anyway, we'll check later how how it will go. But uh, yeah, let me just check the chat. Uh, it looks like you already know what's going to happen. Uh, you at, at least read the title. Uh, someone mentioned electromagnets or an electromagnet. Uh, and yes, I'm going to find uh, the electromagnet inside uh, the device. But uh, anyway, first uh, let me tell you why I have this live stream. The reason number one is that I have been wanting to try a live stream for a long time. And the second reason is that I have too many devices. Uh, of course, uh, device orchestra can't ever be too big. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the devices that I've never played. I have many devices here in in the room, uh, lying, laying around, waiting to be tested. And here, uh, by the way, uh, the printing now begins. I'll just quickly show you. There it starts the preparation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, but anyway, yeah, I have too many devices that I haven't tested yet uh, and I have a limited amount of space here so uh, I need to start testing the devices if they can play music. If they can't play music 
I can throw them away, or actually not throw them away, but recycle them properly. Uh, that's important. Uh, but uh, if uh, I can't play them, if they can't play music, I can use them in device orchestra and I can uh, make uh, device orchestra more how do you say it? I, I can have more uh, different uh, devices in the in, in device orchestra. So I'll start with the electric kettles uh, and I'll try to find out if those can play music or if I should recycle them. Uh, yeah, so that's the reason why I have this uh, live stream. And one important reason is that uh, uh, we, uh, instead of trying to play the electric kettles myself alone, I wanted to do this with you. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a lot more fun and maybe I'll even need some help. Uh, so you can help me if I have some problems. I'm sure I'm going to have some problems along the way. Uh, and I and I also thought it would be fun to show you the whole process of uh, uh, trying to play a device. Uh, okay. Uh, I can see that there's some mentions about spamming uh, in the chat, uh, so maybe uh, I should uh, uh, edit some settings, uh, maybe you can give me some tips about that. Uh, uh, anyway, let's let's see uh, what happens with the chat. Um, okay, you you've stopped the spammer. Great. And hello, the relaxing end. Nice to see you here. Uh, your old kitchen gear, uh, stairway to heaven. Uh, interesting idea. Let's talk about that later. Um, yeah, uh, I think we should start now uh, to try to play the electric kettles. Two hours isn't uh, too much. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll find out during this live stream if the electric kettles can be played or not. But uh, let's let's try anyway. I'll turn the camera down. Let me just uh, switch the scene like this. Here we go. Here. Uh, actually we have two options, two electric kettles. This is the one that was in the thumbnail uh, and this is the one I just got uh, a few days ago as a gift uh, for Device Orchestra from someone I know. And actually I think this looks more promising. Uh, now, what we are going to, how we are going to play these, or try to play these. We're going to try to move this uh, little switch here. This is the switch that you uh, need to push down to start uh, the boiling process. You push this switch down and when the water boils, it goes back up uh, on itself. And I'm uh, sure, I'm very sure that 
there is an electromagnet inside that holds the uh, switch down. Uh, and if we can control the electromagnet, I think we can control this movement movement here. And if we can control this movement, we should be able to play some music. Uh, that's my theory. Uh, and this uh, with this electric kettle, this switch looks better to me and I also like the sound more in this electric kettle the switch is here uh, at the uh, bottom but in this one the same switch is up here and uh, it looks like it's uh, much more difficult to reach uh, the inside of uh, the kettle here. I, the, there's, uh, there, there are no screws that we could uh, uns unscrew uh, up here. There are only some screws down here. So I'm not sure if this part uh, here can be removed so that we we see the electromagnet. So this uh, what this one looks more promising to me. So I'll start with this one, uh, and if something goes terribly wrong, we have a plan B. This this electric kettle here. But yeah, let's start with this one. Uh, let me. Oh, and I'll try to try to uh, keep an eye on the chat uh, to see uh, what's happening there. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, great to see some uh, uh, someone some some people I've seen before. Happy to see you, and happy to see people I've never seen here, at least on uh, on uh, the chat, on on my live stream chats uh, before. Uh, I have had one uh, live stream for uh, my patrons uh, that was kind of a uh, warm up. A live stream for this uh, live stream. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I think this this uh, live stream will be great. Uh, there are already uh, one hundred and twenty four viewers or something here. Uh, let's see how many people will come. Uh, anyway, yeah, Kattilat Soimaan. Let's start uh, enough with the talking. So I'll start by opening this device to see the electromagnet. Uh, I just need to find the correct uh, screwdriver uh, head. This one looks okay. Let's try that one. Uh, maybe I'll zoom this in a little bit so that you can see better. Yeah. Uh, in most of the devices there are some screws and they have these funny shaped uh, heads. You need a funny shaped screwdriver to get those screws out. 
uh, so I have this uh, big uh, series of different uh, screwdriver screwdriver uh, heads to match any screw that there is uh, uh, in, in on the device. Just uh, let's remove the final screw. There, I can already see it moving the, the this part here. And I promise you, I have I haven't opened these myself yet. I don't know what's inside. This is the first time I'll open uh, electric kettle. I'll show it to the camera first, that, so that you can see it before myself. Ah, okay. So here we see some things. It looks interesting. I think these are the ones that uh, warm the water up, that make the water boil. Uh, I think there is a better word for this. Uh, anyway, anyway, these are the ones that uh, make uh, make the work. They they make the water boil. Uh, but here we have some wires. Uh, I'm not sure where they are going to. And where where they're uh, coming from? I think the electricity comes from here, uh, from the the part that's on your table, where you put the electric kettle on. Uh, but anyway, we are interested in this part. The electromagnet is somewhere here, because here is the switch. And look here, all these parts move. I can, I can even feel the magnetism here. Uh, but yeah, now we have opened uh, the device. Let's have a look at the 3D printing and how it is going. Yeah, there is a little jingle in there too. Uh, it's it's funny that, yeah, yeah, that high high pitched sound. Yeah, you're you're right. Heating elements. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I should uh, look at the chat more often. And Mr. Lift, thank you for uh, the two euro. Uh, gift uh, super chat I think that's the first one I got uh, uh, you some some of you think that we need a moderator uh, I'm afraid I can't have a moderator uh, other than myself for this live stream that's a good idea for a future live stream. Uh, but it looks like the chat it looks looks okay to me. Uh, maybe a better moderator could help. Uh, let's think about that for a future uh, uh, live stream. Uh, yeah, that's quite a loud switch too. You're right. Uh, and that's one reason why this looks more promising to me than the other option we had. This isn't loud at all, but this is very loud. And I actually like the jingle sound someone mentioned. But yeah, anyway, let's have a look at the 3D printing. Oh! Is the shield really that big? It looks looks uh, quite big 
to me. But anyway, it looks like everything's going okay. Yeah, 12% done. It's going, it's going well, I say. And at the end of the live stream, uh, I'll try to color the uh, Captain America shield uh, with some permanent markers. Uh, and so at the end of the live stream, I'll try to show you uh, the final product. But yeah, everything's going well there. Let's continue with uh, the main quest of trying to play an electric kettle. Hmm. So, let's see if we can remove some more parts. There's this black part that's almost in the way. It would be better without this, but it looks like, I'm not sure if, if it's going to, oh, okay, it's coming out. Wait, maybe I'll just need to use some force. Uh, the funny thing with these devices is that, at least this electric kettle, it's never meant to be opened like this. It's never meant to be disassembled, so it's not always easy to disassemble and open these devices. Uh, you sometimes need to use force, or some, sometimes you'd need some Star Wars force too. You need, you'd need more force than you have normally. Uh, in your life. Uh, it looks like it would be possible to remove this part, but uh, at the same time I think we don't need to remove that. Uh, I think we'll just leave that uh, there and try to uh, find the electromagnet without removing this part. Uh, uh, love taps, a bit of love taps. Would they help it open up? Hmm, maybe. Uh, no, no. I think I'd need some tools to, to, I don't know, to pry this open or something. But anyway, the electromagnet is here and we can continue uh, trying to, uh, by trying to remove some parts here. Uh, if I remove something, it's important to remember where everything was. So it's good that we have this live stream. Uh, if something goes wrong, I can uh, go back uh, with the live stream uh, recording and see what everything looked like before uh, something happened. Uh, Let's see. I wonder, ah, so there are wires going here all the way uh, into the switch. And I think the only reason is that there seems to be a, a light there inside the switch, probably indi indicating if the boiling is done or not. So I think we don't need to w worry about those wires. They go 
here. Mm. I wonder what are the wires that go to the electromagnet. Mm. I think we should try to remove some parts. Let's see if we can remove this switch thing. Uh, oh, by the way, there are some uh, bolts or some some things that you could remove with some tools uh, to 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 un unscrew them. Maybe maybe removing those could help too. But um, I've all, almost successfully removed this part here. Um, but not quite. Mm. Oh. Oh, okay. So now I can move the switch from here to Pressing this is equal to pressing the uh, original switch. Okay. Mm. Uh, this is always hard. Trying to find a way to disassemble the uh, the device properly. Um, let's look inside here. Well, this doesn't help. There's, of course, there are no screws in, in the place where you put the water in. Mm. I don't know. Do you have some tips? What would you do? Uh, the wires are for the LED, yes. There will be no electromagnet. Someone says there will be no electromagnet. Uh, I don't think so. I think there is an electromagnet, but the electromagnet could actually be also here in the center because uh, this uh, there are also parts that move in the center. Mm, I don't know. I think we should try to remove these bolts here. Let me just find a good tool for that. Let's see if this helps. Yes. Can you see the, the... Just snap it off, someone says. Yeah, that, that, that's one option. Uh, but I don't want to break this. I want to... Uh, well, I want it to look like the original after uh, uh, putting my own wires in after putting my own wires to the electromagnet I'm sure there are better tools for this uh, but there's, believe me, this progress Uh, I'm not sure if, if they've showed uh, in the video well yet, but there are three of uh, these bolts that I'm removing now. After that, I'm sure there will be more, uh, more things visible, and 
that will probably answer to the question uh, of where the electromagnet is. Here. One down, two to go. Actually, let's have a look at print. The 3D printer is actually called print. It's uh, the uh, one of the devices that has a name, Prince hasn't played any songs uh, in Device Orchestra yet, but Prince has printed a lot of useful uh, objects for Device Orchestra. Uh, and it's printing some useful objects right now too. The longer name for print is uh, the device formerly known as print. Thank you uh, whoever gave me the name idea. It's not my idea. I think the best ideas for device orchestra have come from you, the subscribers. Uh, for example, the googly eyes. They were they wasn't they weren't my idea. I think it was the take on me video where I. Uh, tried uh, the Google eyes for the first time, and in the beginning of the video, there's the comment uh, that made me try the Google eyes. And it's funny to think that there are some videos in which there are no Google eyes. Those videos don't look like device orchestra videos to me anymore but but anyway that's how it went uh, I didn't have the idea from the beginning but hey I have good news I'm removing the last of these three bold things and yeah, let's see if it helps. It should help. The, these are sure keeping something together. And if I remove this, something should collapse. Uh, there we go. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it moves more. It moves more. Just show you everything that may be revealed. <gasps> okay, it moves this much. We can now turn this around. Ah, okay, and now I think we can remove this transparent uh, switch thing, or actually, we, we can't remove it. Now there are only the wires uh, keeping these uh, together. Uh, okay. I wonder what these are. There's some sticky... Uh, I don't know, some sticky something. Uh, I think these are meant for measuring the temperature of the uh, water. So, uh, let me check the chat if someone knows better 
and me. Ther thermal paste, yes. I'm sure that's exactly what, what it is. I've seen it uh, on some computers, like, you know, if you want to uh, attach a new computer component to, uh, I don't know, <laughs> to a computer motherboard or something, then you might need thermal paste, maybe. I'm not very good at uh, the hardware side of computers. Uh, but anyway, thermal paste, yeah. So these are then uh, they must be the sensors for the temperature. So if these are the sensors for the temperature, these must be somehow connected to the electromagnet. Because when the uh, water is warm enough, then the electromagnet goes off. So, I wonder where the wires go from these sensors. It looks like there is some, something, not, not someone, maybe there is someone inside, you never know. But maybe there is something inside this black uh, thing, this black box, let's call it black, black box, there can be some kind of a chip uh, that has the logic for uh, the temperature measurement and switching the electromagnet off. Uh, but I'm starting to wonder if, if some of these wires would lead to the electromagnet. Um, so, so if if some of these wires lead to the electromagnet, then we know that we don't actually need to find the electromagnet itself. If if we just uh, know uh, the wires leading to the electromagnet. Hmm, maybe at this point I'll do some measurements with uh, my multimeter and I'll just quickly wash my hands uh, because of the thermal paste. Uh, you look at prints while I do that. I think print is on a schedule and everything looks good to me. I'm just a little bit worried about the size of the shield. It looks quite big to me. I'm not sure if uh, the devices can hold uh, the shield. But that's another another problem that can be solved later, and of course, a bigger a, a shield too big is better than a shield too small. I'd say bigger uh, looks better. Mm, someone says that. The randomizer says that there is no electromagnet here. Yes, there there was uh, one in the toaster. Oh, let me just switch the scene again. So randomizer says that there is no electromagnet inside. Uh, there was uh, one in the toaster. Uh, and that's the reason why I think there should be one in this kettle too, because it, 
the I mean the way it works is uh, the same as with uh, a toaster when you want to turn the toaster on you push the uh, breads down using the switch and then the breads are down until they are ready and then they jump back up when the electromagnet goes off. Uh, of course it's possible that there is no electromagnet, uh, but th at least there should be some kind of motor that makes the switch come back again. And uh, I want to find out what makes that movement. So, next uh, I'll try to see if one multimeter can help me uh, by making some measurements we could get some more clues so I'm measure measuring the resistance of these parts here. Okay, here it says that from uh, this black wire to this black wire there's about mm, 30 ohms of resistance. Mm, and actually, we can try to see if these uh, uh, wires lead to something interesting. At least they lead to the light, but they could also lead to the electromagnet, because when the electromagnet is on, the light is on, and when the electromagnet is off, the light is off too. So, by the way, let me just have a sip of water before that. Uh, and I'll take the sip of water from this mug, this Divas Orchestra mug. These are uh, in the merchandise uh, store available now, so if you want to have one of these uh, you, to yourself, then uh, there's a link in the description to the merch store and you can have one of these for yourself too. And the design is also as a t-shirt design, it's a new design in the merch uh, store, so check it out. Yeah. Ah, oh, the water tastes so good. Uh, anyway, I have this uh, power source here on the table to let me zoom out a little bit so you can see what happens here. So let's put the multimeter away for now. Uh, and let's put these screwdriver things away too for now. So here I have a power source. Uh, let me actually do this small, small trick here so that I can turn the power source facing you so you can see the readings. Yeah. This is very uh, short. Sorry, I'm uh, moving your googly eyes a little bit so people can see your readings. I'm not. I don't need to hurt you. Okay. I think people can see the readings. 
and I can see the reading, readings better. Uh, so yeah, the power source is very important when uh, trying to play devices and when playing the devices is very useful because you can choose the voltage yourself uh, and you can see also see how much uh, current there is uh, going into any motors uh, so these wires currently go to my uh, Arduino, but we don't want that uh, now. We want to connect this power source to the electric kettle, to the black wires there. Uh, maybe we could remove these parts here. No, this doesn't help. The problem is that I've uh, edited uh, the power source a bit, so currently I don't have the spikes that I could just stick here into the device. I need to do some custom wiring things, but that should be easy. Uh, let me check the chat. I promise to keep an eye on that. Mm. Oh, someone uh, says, actually, synchronize says that I should grab a 9 volt battery and hook it up to test this. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, but this should be very quick to set this up to uh, just I need to find a good colored wire yeah now I have the spikes that uh, the power source once had um, yeah synchronize also says that, that there would have to be an electromagnet. Yeah. Someone believes uh, uh, there should be one. Not only not only me, but someone else too. Mm. Thank you, for lighting it and uh, for the mug. Design. I like it too. Uh, eye surgery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for sharing an insight to the genius behind the madness. Uh, thank you. Not yet sure if this is uh, in the madness side or genius side. There's uh, not much uh, success uh, yet, but we'll see. I'll now see what happens. Uh, what would be a good voltage for this? Hmm. At least it takes uh, normally the power from the wall socket, so it could be 230 volts. But I think there's some kind of some something in between, uh, so it shouldn't be that much. Let's at, let's at least see if we can turn the light on. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's turn this on. Now there is power. Something should happen when I connect these wires to the black parts. Let's see. Uh, see. There is the 
here, you can see how the amount of current that goes uh, into the device. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Yeah, so something is happening when we connect wires to these black things. I can't see the light going, uh, turn, turning on. I wonder if the electromagnet uh, goes on or if the heating elements go on. Mm, but actually, uh, let's do something wild uh, at this point. Let me just find the correct tool here. Uh, because we don't want we, we don't need the heating elements anymore. Uh, the heating elements won't be playing music. So we can disconnect the heating elements from this black box. So by disconnecting uh, the heating elements we know that any electricity that go goes in uh, doesn't go to the e heating elements or heating element, I think there's only one. But anyway, let's remove these, or let's cut these wires so that there will be no connection to the heating elements. I wonder what would be, what would be a good place to cut these. If we cut it here, we can possibly reconnect these wires one day. And the second one, yeah. So now we have no connection to the heating elements. Uh, we only have the connection to any parts or any components that's left. There's the light and then there's the electromagnet. I still think there is some kind of an electromagnet inside and then there's the possibly the chip that has the logic, the brains of the uh, uh, kettle. Uh, let me check the chat. 220 volts. Yeah, I think that's the correct number. Mm. Yeah, randomizer thinks the light is parallel to the heating element. Yeah, that's possible too, because when uh, the uh, kettle is on, I think everything is on the heating element and the light and the electromagnet. So yeah, that's a good theory. Maybe maybe everything is in parallel. Uh, no? If it's in series, then everything... No, no. Uh, if, if, it, if it's in... Uh, uh, if it's parallel, then everything could be turned on individually. Oh, not sure. Uh, thermal switch. Ah, thermal switch. Um, Dino's right thinks there's a thermal switch. Uh, thermal switch sounds like something that would be in a device like this. I haven't seen a thermal thermal switch myself, so I'm not sure how it works. Uh, but maybe the thermal switch has some kind of an electromagnet inside itself too. Maybe. Uh, 
the stupid guy 21 says that there should be two thermal switches uh, yeah because there are two thermal uh, sensors yeah could be mm. but anyway there is still only one electromagnet or sh there should be only one electromagnet and there is a magnet here I'm sure this is a magnet this thing that looks like a battery uh, it, it should be related to the electromagnet hmm but anyway let's make some more measurements let's see if there is still a resistance in these uh, black wires and if the resistance has changed uh, let me check how the how the scene looks Maybe I should move this just a little bit here, yeah. It looks like I don't get any readings now. Let me just switch the polarity. Um, no. I don't get any readings anymore. So I think if we now try the same trick as before if we try to connect these to the power source then there shouldn't be any uh, current flowing in yeah it stays at zero so yeah uh, so the current that uh, we had before went to the thermal elements. Uh, I think uh, that's how it went. And now because we uh, cut uh, the wires, then there is no uh, current uh, anymore because the, we have removed the component from the circuit. And now. Uh, let me just check uh, this by replacing, kind of replacing the thermal element with this wire. We have the thermal element here and now I should get some readings again because we've connected the wires back. Yeah, before we got uh, 30 ohms now I get only uh, 6 ohms, I don't get 0 ohms, you would think that it, it could be 0 or around 0 because we only have the wire here, but it, it's 6 ohms, so it's interesting, so maybe there is something else too between these black wires and the white wires mm, yeah but uh, you know what uh, the electromagnet goes on only if the switch is uh, switched on and that was the thing with the toaster too you had to push the switch down to kind of close the electric circuit uh, inside. When you had the breads uh, up and the switch up, then there wasn't anything. Uh, there wasn't uh, a complete uh, circuit inside the toaster. So I think. Before we can uh, uh, test uh, the electromagnet, may, we may need to 
push the switch uh, down. I think it is now down and it seem, seems to stay down on itself. Uh, uh, let me check the chat again if there is some, some if, if someone helps me if someone has some good ideas and please there's a lot of discussion about uh, thermal switches and thermal paste uh, uh, three row solos says that uh, they'd be surprised very surprised if they're was a microcontroller inside? Yeah, I think there's something very simple inside, not a microcontroller, something more simple. Uh, Mega Smiley says, uh, tells me to try injecting voltage through the pegs that go to the base. Uh, I think Mega Smiley means uh, these, uh, I think these uh, two pegs here, that's a good idea, maybe I'll try that. Let me just use these to connect to the pegs. Uh, and another one here so this is where the device normally gets its electricity let me see if i can find the original part where the electricity comes from uh, yeah well at least i i can uh, uh, here is the like the lower part of uh, the other uh, uh, water kettle. This is very dusty. Sorry about that. But anyway, uh, the electricity comes from this, and at the in the bottom of the water kettle there is this uh, round thing that goes here. So the electricity comes originally from here. Yeah, that's a good idea to test it that way because that's where the electricity comes from uh, in the first place. So let's see what are the measurements here. Uh, uh, Thermal paste is everywhere. I should do something about that. Just a sec. Uh, I'll show what Prince, how Prince is doing uh, while I take some paper to wipe out the thermal paste. I think Prince is doing well. I, I, I can see uh, no errors, everything seems to be going well. Uh, and what is actually the percentage? It's 51% uh, done. That's good. I think we are not yet 51% done. So we need to uh, be more quick to to make it before the uh, 3D printing is finished. Uh, so let's go. Let's try to see what happens if I uh, take some measurements from the pegs that you 
advised me to test. So now I have these connected to the pegs. Let's see what the multimeter says. It says, oh, oh, let me just, it's not so easy. Ah. Okay, there's that one and the other one. I'd need more hands here. Uh, here. It says zero ohms, but this one is disconnected. Mm. Just a moment. Now it should be connected. Zero ohms. Mm, maybe, maybe it's more ohms than that. Um, I'm sure these are connected. Yeah. Uh, just one more check. I'll try to. Uh, test the pegs themselves without the wires, the extra wires. I get no readings. I get no readings from this center thing. And if I try to switch the polarity, it doesn't help. So this doesn't give us any clues. Hmm. So what next? Uh, I'll check if you have some ideas. Um, because Smiley says that I could also plug it into the base and test from the mains plug end. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's one option that, but, but, mm, I somehow think that it would be more simple to find the actual electromagnet or the wires to the electromagnet. Mm, let me check if I get some readings if I push the switch down. Mm. Let's test the black wires. No readings, no, no, no readings out. Just, yeah, the multimeter still works. Mm. Okay, it doesn't look too good. Mm. Maybe I should find out how thermal switches work. Or if someone knows how thermal switches work, uh, then please uh, explain me. Uh, yeah, Bear-Tastic Bear says that there is no electromagnet. The lever uh, just reset the bimetallic switch, which is stripped by the steam, shall as vapor ones, the liquid boils. Okay, so uh, thermal switch. Uh, okay. So thermal switch somehow changes its state once the 
temperature is reached. Uh, so uh, I think it works that way. So maybe it could be possible that there is no electromagnet and Mm. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, Dean is right. I heard you. I heard you. The shouting helped. Uh, you asked me to connect the two uh, white wires. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, of course. When we have the thermal element here, uh, these wires are connected. Of course, I'm I'm too silly. I uh, uh, I this this is the madness side I talked about. Uh, I'm not always genius. It takes some time for me to realize things. But now it now I realized that a bit. Uh, more soon because you helped me uh, by shouting. Thank you, uh, Dinas. Now we we'll connect the two to, to, uh, white uh, wires, and now we can make some more measurements. Now we have uh, the possibility to get some actual readings. Let's test the center part again. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Now I get some zero readings. When I have the switch turned uh, on, I got some zero readings. If I, if the switch is not turned on, then I should get nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. So, uh, to close the circuit, you need to both uh, have these wires connected and the switch turned on. Um, but now uh, the question is: that are the are the only elements in this device the thermal uh, heating? element and the light and the thermal switch. Uh, when I look closer to this black part, uh, there isn't much space for any chips. In the toaster there was a small chip uh, inside. Uh, let me see if I could show that to you because it's so much related to this what we are trying to do here oh like I said I have too many devices I can't find uh, the toaster oh oh no I'm sorry I should have found the toaster before the live stream. I'm sure it is somewhere here. Maybe behind these? No. Okay, but anyway, in the toaster there was a small chip uh, in addition to the electromagnet. Uh, so maybe maybe you are right. I'm starting to think that you are right. Uh, the ones that told me that uh, there is no electromagnet. I can see a magnet here, but something uh, tells me that there is no electromagnet. And the something is that this doesn't look the same as the toaster. 
it looks much different. Maybe there's only the thermal switch. Uh, but, okay. How the thermal switch then works exactly. Um, Beartastic uh, says that to play uh, this, I should use a solenoid to actuate the lever and rip everything else out. Yes, uh, to to uh, play this, I would need to move the lever myself. Yeah, you could have a solenoid here. Uh, pushing this lever, uh, we could get a percussion sound. And I think this is uh, quite um, uh, pleasing sound. I like this sound. Mm, but at the same time, I think. Mm, I wonder if he, we could somehow hack the thermal switch. If we could somehow, uh, like, bypass the thermal switch uh, or the thermal part of the switch. Mm. Well, let's do some testing. Now we have the switch turned on. Let's let's have some uh, electricity going to different places of this black thing. And let's increase the voltage too. Because uh, it always helps if something doesn't seem to happen then raising the voltage uh, might help at least when playing the devices and they can't play a high note then increasing the voltage helps but there are uh, there are different uh, metallic parts in this uh, black thing so I'll now try to connect the power supply to different parts of this black thing. And if we are in luck, the thermal switch uh, goes off somehow. I wonder if that's possible, but okay. Uh, now we got a short circuit, I think, we have 23 volts, and if I connect these, oh, you can't see anything, I'm sorry, uh, I need to move this a bit, yes, now I think you can, you can see it better, I'll zoom in again, uh, I'm not sure if you are able to see everything, but there are some metallic parts here, and I even get some sparks now, so something's happening, but the switch here doesn't move. Uh, maybe one option would be to somehow use electricity to raise the temperature uh, for these uh, um, thermal uh, switch uh, sensors to make the uh, thermal switch go off. Mm. That's one option, but I'm not sure how to 
how I would do that. Maybe if I make a short shortcut here uh, for the ther for one thermal switch, uh, maybe the temperature of the thermal switch would uh, be so high that the thermal switch triggers and uh, makes the switch go up. Now I need the chat. I wonder if <laughs> this is something uh, I should try or if you think it's worth trying. Yeah, I know I keep missing the comments. I need to now read how the thermal switch uh, works. Uh, I just need to find the correct comments uh, Frey von Datenstau tells me to put uh, the tube thing in my mouth and blow to see if the switch uh, goes off then uh, uh, that's one option but uh, I don't try that uh, the first, uh, I'll try something else first, I think. Uh, Dan Riches says that the thermal switches usually have a number on them which states the trip temperature. Microwaves have them too. Mm, Hello, Diamond World. Uh, a thermal switch is also bimetallic switch. Uh, okay, bare testing says that you can glue a resistor to the bimetallic switch to trip them, but you need the mechanical motion to push the lever down to rearm it. Uh, yeah, for rearming the switch, I have a plan. Uh, maybe, maybe, hmm. Maybe a rubber band would help. Maybe it could have just enough power to turn the switch. Hmm, not sure actually. Uh, well, hmm, anyway, that's, that's another problem. First we need to solve the problem how to uh, trigger the thermal switch. So let me read some more comments. Um, Yeah, uh, bimetallic switch to trip them. Mm. Red teapot says that there is no way to bypass the electric switch. It's just a strip of metal. Okay. So, if I un if I've understood correctly, uh, the thermal switch. Uh, works by uh, having some some metal in it and when it heats up uh, it's uh, the length of the metallic part or something uh, changes and the change in the length of the metallic part makes the switch go off maybe that's how it works, if I've understood correctly. Mm. Uh, let me read some more comments. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, anyway. Uh, uh, by the results, uh, the results so far uh, tell us that an electric kettle can't be used for singing melodies. For melodies, you would need an electromagnet, and I think uh, 
we now know that there is no electromagnet inside. You have known it before me. Uh, there has been a lot of comments uh, claiming that there wouldn't be an electromagnet. I didn't believe you uh, in the beginning, but I believe you now. The thermal switch uh, theory sounds now valid to me and also I can only see the magnet here but I can't see any wires going into the magnet so it looks like there is no way uh, electricity could go into this part where the magnet is mm. So, yeah, the result is that uh, an electric kettle can be only used for percussion uh, purposes, only as a percussion instrument. Uh, but uh, the next thing would be to find out how it could be used as percussion instrument. Uh, yeah. Mm. You mentioned hi-hat in the chat. Yeah. This could be a hi-hat sound. If we can make this movement fast enough. Mm. Uh, yeah, Dinos Wright says that kettles are great for boiling water to make a great coffee. Yeah, you are right. You don't need to always try to play music on devices. You, they, they are sometimes better at their original purpose. You are right. Uh, yeah, Dog Developer Games says that it. And it is an alloy that bends on temperature, yes. So it looks like I've understood uh, at least approximately how thermal switch works. And now I think we are at the same page. Uh, mm, Dax uh, suggests, uh, what about finding a way to get it to whistle? Uh, you know how a tea kettle does? Uh, I think this model doesn't have that whistle uh, uh, functionality. Uh, mm, that could be possible to somehow, somehow edit this uh, part where the steam comes off. Uh, but I don't want to heat the water uh, with this device anymore, so I think it is quite impossible to make it whistle. Though it would be cool to have a whistling sound. Um, Bertastic says, says that uh, 650,000 people disagree uh, uh, that some uh, that some devices uh, are better at their orig original purpose. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'll I'll try to make everything play music. Um, uh, Red Teapot says that maybe you can remove the metal discs and add an electromagnet somewhere. Yes. Um, yes, that's true. Uh, uh, though we have only the static magnet here and not an electromagnet, I think we could replace this with an electromagnet. And 
make the uh, switch move with the new magnet, but uh, that sounds uh, maybe a bit too hard. I would need to cut this thing off here and find an electromagnet that fits here. And also, uh, when I play devices, I try to try not to add too many motors or components myself, but use the original components. So maybe at the moment the plan is to try to uh, use these components, but somehow uh, bypass the thermal switch. Mm. Though it is, uh, though you you said that uh, it can't be bypassed, and I understand. I understand that. Um, Mm, more comments. Uh, ah, okay. Bear Tastic uh, says that uh, yeah, some some uh, models uh, switch off when uh, they get the uh, vapor when the water bo water boils and makes the vapor, and there is probably something that recognizes the vapor that comes from uh, boiling. Uh, so those models could be tricked somehow, maybe. Mm -hmm. And they could have some other components than, than this one. That's true. Uh, mm, yeah, Martin Svensson, Svensson says that I could use this as a percussion instrument and play it at 40k beats per minute or something to play melodies. Uh, yeah, that's actually what I do with uh, some devices, but uh, it looks like it would be very hard to play this at 40k beats per minute, uh, because there is no electromagnet. Uh, we need to somehow find a very quick uh, way to switch the to turn the switch on and off. Uh, and a solenoid motor, for example, could uh, make this movement. But then, then again, a solenoid motor. Uh, can't uh, play anything at 40k beats per minute, uh, so that's not an option. Interesting idea, though. Mm. Some more comments. Yeah, the solenoid is mentioned many times. Hmm, mm, yeah, but would a solenoid fit into the device? We have this, this is how much space we have for the solenoid, uh, if the solenoid would be inside. Mm. Maybe the black 
part was here like it was like oh let me zoom out just a little bit um, yes it was here mm. yeah i think it would be hard to have a solenoid inside the device we could have a solenoid here uh you remember the switch was sticking out from the device like this we could have a solenoid here uh, but then, yeah, I think we'd need a solenoid pushing the lever down and then, I don't know, a rubber band uh, pulling it back up again. Mm. But I'm not sure if that would be very entertaining. I would love to see the switch going uh, up and down on itself somehow. Hmm. Maybe what what I can still do in this live stream. I can try to remove some more parts from this black thing to find out if there are any any places where we could uh, uh, connect some wires to mm, actually I can see some wires there uh, Yeah, hmm. I think this is a very tough one. Mm. Well, you know what? I think I need to think about this. I need to study this, uh, this thermal switch thing and try to come up with a solution how to control it. Uh, myself. Uh, but for this live stream, we still have the 3D printing uh, 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 going on. And after the print is done, I'm going to color the uh, prints uh, that have um, the, the finished uh, prints. Uh, to make them more look more like the Captain America shield and Thor's hammer, they are now all white. Um, but before that, we have some minutes before the print is done. It's now at eighty-one percent. You remember, we had this plan B. This other uh, electric kettle, and here the switch is up here. I thought it would be a bad uh, bad bad thing that the uh, switch would be here uh, because it's it's not so easily accessible. But because it's up here and not down here, it tells me that the mecha mechanism uh, with this switch could be different uh, to the one in this kettle. So with this, uh, I don't know how many minutes we have left, about 20 minutes, we can still try to open this device and see if this has a thermal switch too. Maybe there is some thermal uh, sensors here. 
and then some wires that go up here. I don't know. But there is a possibility that this mechanism isn't the same. So, uh, let me check the comments again. Oh, and there was a super chat thing from our space. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, um, bed, bed prank says that uh, I should fake the thermostar signal and solenoid to put it back on. Mm, I've understood that there is no signal in the thermal switch. It's only the metallic plate heating up and uh, growing because of the temperature change. So I think we'll forget this uh, thermal switch thing for now. Let me just move these all uh, screws and bolts away so that they won't be mixed up with the ones in this one. Uh, and let me move the power supply away a bit for now. We don't need that yet. And multimeter, I'll take you back again later if needed. Uh, so, uh, back to uh, the beginning. Let's remove some screws. Ah, uh -huh, it's funny. Uh, this one has same kind of screws as the uh, the first. Uh, electric kettle, though it's not the same brand. That's interesting. And it, it has happened to me a lot of times with the credit card machines, too. Though they are of a different brand, they often look uh, like the same inside, surprisingly same. But now, of course, we hope that this, uh, this electric kettle doesn't look like the same uh, inside as the first one, because the first one turned out to be hard, turned out to be hard to play music uh, on. Let's see if I can remove this part now, at least it feels a bit different to the first one. It's much, it's much more sturdy, removing the screws only wasn't enough, but I need to now use some force to Finally, remove this part. Oh, <laughs> okay, I forgot. I didn't see this. This little screw here. So they, there weren't three screws, there were four. So that's different to the first electric kettle we opened. Uh, okay. This is the inside of the of the second electric kettle and it looks familiar. Uh, it's surprisingly similar to the first electric kettle. 
they are uh, black, black uh, plastic parts and a round thing where the electricity goes in. There's the thermal um, uh, heating element, uh, like the first, uh, it looks very much like the first one. It always surprises me how uh, devices of different brand look like the, almost the same on the inside. Uh, but now the question is, is there the same kind of a mechanism here that makes the switch here to go up? Mm, at least uh, it feels that if I push this down, it doesn't stay down itself. With the first uh, electric kettle that had the switch here, if I pressed it down, it stayed down on itself. Uh, and that's interesting. Because that would be a good clue of that uh, there the, the mecha mechanism that keeps this switch down is different to the first one. Mm. And with the first in the first uh, electric kettle there was the thermal paste and these round things here. At least not yet. Uh, at least I can't see uh, the same components in this second. Uh, one here. Uh, okay. Okay, it looks like we lost the camera connection. Let me check if the camera has overheated. Mm. At least it, it was shut down. Uh, it, it shut down itself. Maybe there was a thermal switch inside the camera that made it switch off itself, maybe. Uh, but now, yes, now the camera works again. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the camera didn't die, uh, fortunately. Uh, yeah, it's back again. I think you can also hear the uh, audio now. I hope the microphone also works. Mm. Yeah, but back with the uh, this electric kettle. I was going to remove these screws here. I really need for the next uh, live stream, I really need to find a way to uh, look at the uh, to to see what happens in the chat. Uh, because while I'm working, it's hard to see the chat and what I'm working uh, at at the same time. Okay, the make. Uh, Mike is good, you can hear me. Good, thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, red, uh, the red teapot says that, yeah, there is uh, more space for a solenoid here. Yeah, that's true. 
uh, but now let's first okay huh hey you know what there is something here some some there is a switch here that moves this switch here let me check that I'll, that you can see it in the camera uh, so watch this switch here I can move it by moving this part at the bottom so it's connected to this switch so there is not uh, there there's no electromagnet here there is no uh, electric components here the electric component that makes the movement is here in the bottom and it uh, controls this switch up here by some mechanical part that goes through the uh, kettle. I think it it's just a design thing. Uh, people who designed this kettle decided that uh, it's more useful and more easy to use if the switch is up here than if the switch would be down here. So, uh, everything that we are interested in is here in the bottom. Uh, let me check the chat. Yeah. Yeah, apparently there's a lever going from the bottom to the bottom uh, from 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 the switch to to the bottom part yes like red teapot says uh, now the next question is what makes this movement here is there an electromagnet making this movement or is there again some thermal switch things uh, I think what what is holding this down? Okay, yeah. Uh, so let me show you these white things here are the ones that are connected to the switch up here. But, uh, look at this, we have thermal switch looking things here, these thermal sensors, like the one uh, ones in the first electric kettle. So it doesn't look promising, it looks very much the same. It seems that the mechanism that moves uh, the switch is the same uh, in this uh, electric kettle. Mm. Let me just check if I can find any any other components that would be different to the first first uh, kettle. Mm. I can't seem to find any other components. I'll check the chat. Uh, what do you think? Uh, 
does it look the same? Do you think there could be some other mechanisms in this one? What should I do next? What should I check? Uh, uh, earlier, dog, well, dog developer games that said at the thermal sensor of the camera heard about the bypass of their kettle friends and rebelled. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I should shut down the microphone of the camera so that he wouldn't hear what I'm talking. Uh, relax, camera, I don't, I'm not going to touch you, at least not before I have a new camera. Mm. Uh, any other uh, comments? Uh, there's so much text. I'm I'm not no I'm not so fast reader. Uh, uh, seems to me that the second lever switch can be changed on or off. Would we achieve electrical control more quickly? Mm. Yeah, this switch could be controlled more quickly. It feels different to the first one. And actually, it is a bit different to the first one. I can Pull, uh, I can push the uh, switch of the first electric kettle down and it stays down. But here it doesn't stay down. And uh, in the first electric kettle I can see the magnet that makes uh, it possible for the switch to stay down, but I can't see, I can't find the similar magnet in this one, in this other uh, kettle. So it is different, it, and it feels that it could be controlled uh, more quickly. Mm. Uh, Red Teapot thinks, thinks uh, they saw the steam pipe going to the bottom assembly. Hmm. So could there be a steam pipe? Uh, some kind of pipe that uh, recognizes the steam that uh, uh, that uh, comes uh, from the water when it boils. Could there be some kind of a pipe here going all the way through the uh, kettle to the bottom part? Uh, it's possible. Uh, but then the next question would be how the steam, what does the steam do here at the bottom? Is there something that recognizes the steam or is it just the temperature of the steam that triggers the uh, thermal switch? Uh, okay, Rick T put, uh, continues. Uh, they suppose the mechanism is almost the same. Uh, the difference being that it doesn't stay on. Yeah. Uh, perhaps if I disassemble the handle, I can place a solenoid there to actuate uh, the bottom. 
Mm. Yeah. I would really like to disassemble the handle, but it feels very hard to do that. There are no screws in the handle, and I can't seem to find any screws from around the handle. Uh, so, without using too much force, it is very hard to see to inside the handle. Hmm. Uh, any more comments? Yeah, Red Teapot uh, likes the bell sound of the first kettle. Uh, yeah, I liked that too. It, it sounds... Uh, it sounds good. There are a lot of metallic parts. We're not... We don't know which one of those makes the bell sound. Or oh, wait, wait. Yeah, the bell sound comes from this. Uh, I'm not actually sure if it is an electromagnet after, uh, or a magnet, I mean, a magnet after all, because it seems to be very thin. Now we can hear the bell sound, but if I place a finger here, we can't hear the bell sound. So the bell sound is uh, done by this this part here, and actually, it doesn't seem to be a magnet. Maybe the magnet is somewhere else. Hmm. So, it looks like there is still much to learn about electric kettles. I was going to try to have an electric kettle play in the next video, the Avengers uh, theme, but it seems that it is very hard to find out how to play an electric kettle. Uh, we might need some solenoids to help with uh, pushing the switches. Uh, or we would somehow maybe need to change the mechanism that makes the uh, switch uh, go off or that what triggers the switch. So uh, I think as a result of this live stream uh, we uh, know now know that it is uh, not possible to play melodies on electric kettles. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, at least not without adding some new electric components. Uh, and in addition to that, it seems hard to play uh, percussion uh, parts uh, on an electric kettle. It, it seems hard to play, uh, you use uh, an uh, electric kettle as a percussion instrument. I think that's the result. But I'm going to, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to throw these away yet. I still need to check if there would be any way to play music on these. Uh, at least uh, I'm gonna try 
to uh, use these as percussion instruments. Uh, but uh, we have the 3D prints ready now. Ta-da! There's the um, American uh, Captain America shield and the Thor's hammer. And let's now take those from the print bed. Uh, there seems to be some black spots here, but other, other than that, it looks like the prints are okay. And before we end this live stream, I'll color these uh, prints with Captain America, Sh America Shield colors, so that we'll have some something uh, some some visible results uh, uh, in this uh, live stream. I'm going to adjust the uh, camera a bit so that you can see the print more better. Yeah, it's uh, Prusa Mini, yeah, Dinos Ride, uh, uh, so correctly. Uh, maybe, yeah, Dinos Ride thinks the nozzle is burning, my filament. Uh, that could be, but it also could be that I had a black, I had black filament in the printer uh, before changing to white, so those could be some traces of the black filament. Uh, yeah, let me change the yeah okay now you should see the print better let's move this uh electric kettle parts a bit uh so let me just take my permanent markers from here Yeah, uh, uh, let me check the chat again. Mm. Uh, it's it's great that you have been here uh, watching the whole process, though we didn't hear any music in this live stream i can see that there are uh, many people who have watched the whole live stream so thank you for that uh yeah thanks it it looks good to me too let's just color the prints to make them look even better let me just google uh, the Captain Amer America shield, so that we'll get it colored right. Okay. So the outmost circle should be red. Let's start with that. Uh, and I just need, to, yeah. Now I can see the chat again. Yeah, let's start. Did I say red? Yeah, I said. Maybe you can help me too by giving me uh, instructions on how to color the Captain America shield. Uh, 
Uh, it doesn't look as red I'd want it to look like, but I think the result will be okay. Another option would be to use different uh, filaments of different colors, but uh, I currently only have black and white, so it, it's not an option here. Those black uh, traces, the traces of the black uh, filament disturb me a bit. I'll try to quickly get rid of those black spots. Let's zoom in a bit a bit more. By the way, if you have some tips on how to get rid of these black spots, then share share those ideas in the chat. Rimagi Rim says that might have to use whiteout or something to cover the black spots. Yeah, you can be right. I think. I think. That's something we need to do here. I don't want to damage the shield too much. Uh, maybe I... I'm not sure if I have something white I could use there. Maybe... Maybe, maybe something like this. Uh, well, I think the black spots is something I can fix later. Let's just color the uh, shield first and then see what it looks like. One more round to get it evenly colored. I'm color coloring my fingers too, but that's okay. Venus writes, uh, uh, yeah, it's been a long day. It's been a long stream too. I'm not uh, surprised that you're tired. Um, Red outside, white next, okay. Thank you, thank you, Dirk Hoekstra. So next is white. Mm. Then red again, okay. The star is white and areas around star is blue. Ah, okay, so we have two red circles and uh, blue just around the star. Okay, thanks. Okay, Anya says that I should use nail uh, file or nail varnish uh, to do the paint job. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. That w could cover the cover the uh, black black uh, stains or the black uh, traces of the black filament better. Um, knife and sanding paper, yeah, yeah, that 
could work too. It feels that they could be they could be removed somehow. It feels that they are only at the surface of the shield. Yeah, I can get some of the stains out with this screw driver. Mm, but there is some black filament inside this shield too. Uh, at least here you can see that there is some bla black filament and then white filament uh, uh, on top of it. Not sure if the camera... yeah, now you can see it better. But yeah, anyway, let's color the next circle. It's very calming to do this coloring at the end of the live stream. It was, uh, it's always very exciting to open the devices, but uh, you always need something to calm yourself down after doing doing that. It's starting to look like the Captain America shield, at least to me. I think I'll put it here and do the final round of the red uh, red permanent marker here yeah let's try this it it's not perfect but I think it's okay if, if it looks homemade. And I think if we then color the the center, it will look much better. So let's do that. Around the circle, uh, around the star, it's blue. The hammer is silver, someone says. Dinas. Ah, Dinas, you have helped so much. Uh, you've helped me so much uh, in this live stream. Thank you for being here. Uh, we have a silver uh, marker too, so we can, we can do that coloring after this one. It's, it feels like a coloring book. You know, those pictures with just the black lines that form the objects. And then you need to color them yourself. Very relaxing. Just two more blue areas, but uh, I thought there was silver in the Captain America shield too. Am I right, or is it just the Thor's hammer that should be silver? Thank you, Mr. Lift. 
Uh, I'm happy to hear that this dream is calming. Hey, it's starting to look like Captain America shield. Good morning, Craig. Ah, it's morning in New Zealand. That's so funny. Um, you make the handle brown, Dina says. Uh, well, I don't have a brown marker, so I can't make it brown now. Uh, if we come up with a solution to make it brown, I can uh, make it brown for the video. But uh, in this live stream, I can only use these colors. I could make it black in this live stream, but I think I should keep it white uh, if I uh, find uh, brown color later. Silver only the back, uh, only on the back says Dinas. Ah, okay. So it should be silver uh, in here. Of course, we can do that too. Tuomas asks, uh, on if if uh, if it works. Uh, playing the water kettles didn't work. Uh, it would take more time to find out how to play them as percussion uh, instruments. Playing melodies on uh, water kettles turned out to be more or less impossible. Uh, but using them as uh, percussion instruments could be possible. Uh, it looks like we have a problem here, maybe. There's not much silver left in the silver marker. I think we'll color the Thor's hammer first and then see if there's silver left for the back of the shield. Uh, Seg Horses Hobbies UTD asks if I have a green marker. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a green marker. I can check if I have a green, green something. Hey, I have these. Maybe these help. These are not uh, permanent markers, but but they are some some colors, some 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 markers. But anyway, let's start with uh, coloring the hammer uh, with silver, and we can think about using these colors to try the brown brown color uh, during this coloring but yeah the 3d prints uh, worked uh, well Uh, they they were they were a success. If we just can color them correctly, 
They will look amazing in the video. It looks like I should buy a new silver permanent marker. It's very hard to get the silver out from this marker. Mm. Yeah, Anya, I think you're right. These won't stick to the plastic surface. Uh, maybe we can try to use those. Uh, but I think you're right. They, I think they won't stick. Maybe need, we need to add something to this part to make the color stick. I think I'll uh, record uh, the Avengers video uh, in one week, in, in the next weekend. So we'll have time to solve these coloring problems until that. So we have one week time to uh, have the brown coloring here and I think we have one week time to buy a new silver permanent marker I think this is all the silver that I can get out from this marker It's still quite white. Uh, yeah, I think I need to buy a new silver marker. But you get the idea. It should be silver. And also these, these small details uh, on the handle should be uh, silver. Let me just try to see what happens if I color this handle with or actually let's let's test here on the back of the shield uh, hmm, at least it sticks we can get some green color here but I think doesn't stay on the shield if I try to wipe it out. Yeah. We can get some color here, but it goes off easily. Mm. So, to have. Yeah, Dirk says that I could paint. Yeah, I could use a brush to paint paint it. Yeah, that would be cool. Mm. But first, let's try these these ones that I have. I don't have a brush, and I don't have any colors to use uh, on the brush. So I wonder if I could get some uh, some brown color with these uh, markers that I have or fine liners they're called.
Mm, it looks almost like brown to me. I think we can try to paint the handle with these. And if it looks terrible, I think we can remove the color from the handle afterwards because, because it's not permanent marker. Uh, but this takes a lot of time, I think. Maybe I'll just test if this would lead to good results and I'll, I, I'll finish the painting later. But thank you for the brush idea. I think that would be the best way of doing the coloring using a real brush. Yeah, I think this looks just messy. There is some green, some red, and then there's some white. Uh, also, because the color doesn't stick. Yeah. I think I need to find another way to color this. I need to either find a brown permanent marker or a green permanent marker to make a brown color for the handle. And I also need to buy a new silver marker to color the back of the uh, Captain America shield silver and to paint the Thor's hammer silver. Yeah. But the prints themselves, I think they look good. And the blue and red color on the shield, I think they look good. It looks exactly like uh, Captain America shield. Yeah, uh, but of course in the video there will be googly eyes on the shield. So let me just add those before I end the live stream. So, at least I think the shield should have googly eyes. And I think most of the people would agree. What do you think? Should the uh, shield have googly eyes or not? Oh, thank you. Thank you for the coloring tips. I really need to. Uh, I really need to find some good uh, materials, maybe, maybe the fine brush, I think that would be, that would lead to the best results. Okay, thanks, Developer Games and Koraemon78, uh, agree, the googly eyes make 
Every, googly eyes make everything better. So, this is the final product. Uh, Captain America shield with googly eyes. I only need to find a way how someone could hold this shield, but that's another uh, another story. Uh, I'll have one week to find out how to do that. But yeah, again, thank you for being here in this live stream. Uh, it was very great to meet you uh, and to chat with you. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't read all your messages, uh, but thank you uh, for those messages. messages anyway, and thank, thank you for helping me. It was much more fun to do this, do all this opening devices thing with you. Uh, let's see what kind of live stream we'll have next. Maybe uh, I'll try to have some music in the next live stream. Uh, and also uh, you can uh, send me some ideas uh, of some for some future live streams uh, you can write comments uh, to this live stream I think uh, yeah but anyway thank you for this live stream it was great experience and though we couldn't play any music on the devices it was fun to try to play the devices with you. Uh, so, until next time and until the next video. Uh, the Avengers uh, video will be published later, later this month. But, yeah, thank you and good night or good morning wherever you are in the world thank you bye bye